Hello, welcome back to Corey's Corner. In this little series, Networking with Ruby, we're going to be building a CRUD API client with the Ruby programming language. So in my last couple of videos, we actually built a API that holds our um, favorite books. So in this episode, we're going to be creating a client for that API. If you haven't seen that series, please check it out and be sure to subscribe. But anyway, let's start coding. So we're going to be using the Faraday gem, and you can run uh, gem install Faraday to get started and install that. And then you can check out um, Lost Island, whatever this website is. I will link it in the description, but this is Faraday's homepage. It's a really clean website. And you'll find that unlike the other um, networking request libraries with Ruby, Faraday is really intuitive and easy to use. So that's why I chose it for this series. But anyway, we're going to get started by creating a class called API Client. And we're going to create our initialize method, which is going to take a model. So ideally, what I would like to get um, out of this series is I want to create an API client that will um, we can initialize with some data that will work for any type of any type of um, CRUD application. So it doesn't matter what our model or attributes are; it'll be really flexible. So we're going to create a URI instance variable. And it's going to be HTTP localhost port 3000 slash API slash v1. And then we'll do whatever our model is called. And then we're going to create an at URI uh, URI um, method that just returns the URI and we will create our books API like this API client dot new and then we pass in the model so it's plural so books and then we are going to just print out our URI puts the books API is located at bookapi.uri. Now we're going to create an index action. We'll do def index. <clears throat> um, at response will be our instance variable, and we just do faraday.get at uri. But first, to use the Faraday classes, we need to require Faraday. So you can just type require Faraday. So what this does is it runs um, all of the it runs the all of the Faraday files, which will create the Faraday modules and their associated classes, and then you can use those in your file. We're actually going to create a private method. And that's going to be called just response. And we'll just print out our response like this. So we'll put at response dot status. We're actually going to wrap this in quotation marks. And then we can print out our, we'll actually do this. We'll do. Um, how do I want to do this? We can do body equals JSON dot parse at response dot body, and we'll, peep, we'll print out pretty print the body. So now we can call this private method inside of our index method, and we'll do this with all of our CRUD actions. So we can do book API dot index and then we'll run this. Oops. So I, I got an SSL error. Let me run it again just to show you. Um, and that's because I used HTTPS instead of HTTP. So we just change the protocol up here and that will go away. Um, so I 
believe we have to include, we need to require JSON as well. So require JSON and we'll run our file one more time and it worked this time. So if we were just to print out the body like this um, without the json.parse, it would look really messy. And I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. So we'll just do that. <clears throat> yeah, it just doesn't look good. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna change this to response and then we're gonna do our at body equals json dot parse response dot body and our at status equals response dot status and we just change this up oops and my computer's freezing I don't know what the heck just happened there, but we'll clean this up like so. And now we have our first um let me just do this because we might do more than one response. Now we have our API client ready. So as you can see, the methods on the Faraday class are very intuitive. If you want to um, create a response, you just use the traditional HTTP verb. So get, put, patch, um, delete, and post. And we'll work on those in the next video. And if you want the body of your response, it's just at, uh, the body method on the response object. If you want the status, it's status. And we could also do headers, but there's really not anything we want in the headers right now. So we'll leave that as it is. All right, so in the next video, we're gonna be working on the show and the post actions, and then we will take it from there. Thank you for watching Corey's Corner. Be, sub be sure to subscribe and check out my podcast and my blog. Thank you for watching.